What's up guys, my name is Cairo and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we will be looking at lighting essentials and core concepts and just how critical lighting can be for setting the right mood for your scene. We will be going through different sources of lights and just various basic settings that you can go through just to improve the look of your build. First of all, we are going to just go through the difference between the lit and unlit modes in Unreal Engine. As you can see over here, we have our lit mode, and if we are to click this, it will show us essentially just our textures on all of our meshes without any shading. As you can see in the photos that are being shown right now, lighting can make a huge difference to your scene. This, these three photos that are being shown is just the difference between the build we, as we have it right now and the build as it will be with directional lights, spotlights, point lights and different light building techniques that we are going to look through. So without any further ado, let's get started. Obviously, the biggest source of light in any scene and in any instance is going to be our sun. Obviously, if you're working in a day scene. Right now, this directional light is set up as our light source. So as we move this directional light so will our sun also move so right now the sun is pointing directly down i.e it is directly above us right now and we would like it to sort of shine through this portal we have over here so i'm just going to change the angle so now we have this shadow from our window. Now, the majority of this video is going to be a light building, so I'm just going to do that and then skip ahead so that you don't have to sit through that. But for the moment, when we build our lighting, our lighting quality is going to be set to preview. So for now, let us build that. Now that our lighting has finished building, you can see that we now have our first source of light within our scene. However, you can see that our subsurface material in the curtain has been now lit up, but this shadow is not very accurately represented within our scene. It's not as smooth and as clean as we would like over there. We are going to get to that just now. For now, we are just going to look at the different types of lighting sources available in Unreal. So if you go to our place mode on the left chair and click on lights, you'll see that we have a directional light, which is what we have been using as our light source. Then we have a point light, a spotlight and a skylight. A point light is similar to a light bulb in that it casts light in all directions at once. A spotlight, as the name implies, is similar to a spotlight and will cast light in a sort of cone shape. So what's important to remember when you are lighting your scene is that you shouldn't necessarily light without cause. In general, you want to place your lights where you have lamps, uh, where you have windows, where you have portals, anything that could accurately provide light. So for now, this lamp would probably have a light bulb in it. So I'm going to add a point light into our scene. And you can already see that already looks a lot better than without. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this into position where 
my light bulb would probably be. When I was doing this earlier, I just set the height to 285 because it seemed to work quite well. This is an old scene I was working on, so the textures and the subsurface materials are not too great, which is why we don't get a very nice look from this. So I think that should be fine. Now I have three other lamps in my scene. But before I place lights at in, we're just going to go through some of the settings in our details panel for our point light. Over here we have our intensity, which could be related to maybe a watt in a traditional light bulb. The more intense the light is, obviously the brighter it will be and the more it will affect your scene. For now, let's set these, spot, these point lights at an intensity of 2. The attenuation radius is essentially how far the light will spread. So you can see over here this blue line is actually how far that light is going to cast. Now this is entirely up to preference but I might just change that to 500 and now you can see that radius more clearly. Now that we have done that, we can simply hold down Alt and drag there to duplicate this point light. And then we are just going to drag it in there and it should look pretty similar. Okay. Now you can see that our lighting needs to be rebuilt, but we're just going to finish placing all of these spotlights before we do that. And now lastly, I'm just going to duplicate that one more time. And you'll notice now that a red X has appeared on your point light. That is because if you look inside our details here we actually have three options for the mobility of our light source. Now currently all of our point lights are set to stationary. That means that the light source itself cannot move and it allows for partially baked lighting but if you have a character moving throughout your scene it will cast dynamic shadows for that. Now we could change the source of any one of these or all of them to movable and that would result in us not having to build our lighting. As you can see the warning for the lighting needing to be rebuilt has disappeared. But if we have these movable lights we can't have all that nice baked lighting. It will render shadows in real time, but it will not look as good as your baked lighting, which has taken a while to render. So I'm going to set these all back to stationary. You can see that our warnings are once again appearing. And when I change the stationary, there we go. The reason why I was getting a red cross over here, see now that I've added another light source that has once again appeared, is because you can't have more than four intersecting light sources in your scene, otherwise this will cause cascading shadows which may cause artifacts inside your scene. So in order to solve this, if it does happen for you, you could change the mobility to static which means that this light source will fully rely on the baking of your light bulb. It will not cast dynamic shadows and it will not be dynamic in any way whatsoever. There are pros and cons to this. As I said, it will not cast shadows, but it, also, it is also the fastest rendering. So you sort of have to decide what you feel is the most important light in your scene 
and then you can have that as a stationary light if you wanted to cast shadows but then your sort of background lights that will not impact your scene as much you can make them static and then that is how you solve that so now we have our four point lights set up now on this lamp on the desk over here i'm just going to add a a spotlight as you can see here we now have the spotlight which as i said emits a cone shaped light these are the various angles that you can play with over here i'm just going to set this to let's say 35 for the meantime and we can rotate this You just want to make sure that your light is not actually going through any of your meshes otherwise it will cause unrealistic lighting so maybe let's bump the intensity up here okay that looks good if you want to change your inner cone angle or your outer cone angle at the moment i have no inner cone angle if i were to set that to let's say the majority let's make that 28 you can now see that you have this much brighter cone in the center over there personally i prefer to use an inner cone angle of zero just because I would like to get that nice soft light but that is a matter of personal preference so now we have all of our point lights and spotlights set up in the scene these are all the lights that I used for the screenshots at the beginning of the video but this spotlight in particular I can't help but feel that if you look at it it looks a bit boring so what we're going to do is we are going to change the IES profile of this spotlight. So if you go to the details tab and if you scroll down all the way over here, we get to light profiles and then you have an IES texture which you can add. So if I use the drop down here, Unreal has provided us with a few IES profiles which we can use. I'm going to use the complex IES one. Now you can see that this sort of shape has appeared over here and that is effectively how the light shines. So instead of taking a basic cone and just projecting a flat white light on it, it is now using this IES intensity to project light onto our meshes. If I use that IES intensity, it's a bit much. This is also a bit bright for my liking, so I'll set this to 4. That seems okay. As you can see, we're now getting this nice chair shadow over there, but you can change that however you like. Now you'll notice in our scene that we have quite a few reflections. This wood is quite specular or shiny, so we'd like that to render realistically so if i go here to my reflections view mode you can see that it sort of is all reflecting the sky and we would like it to reflect the floor the objects in the scene and the walls that are made of wood obviously so if i go back to our lit mode now we're going to search here for something called a sphere reflection capture so if you drag this into your scene as i move this around if you watch the reflection behind the light you can sort of see that it is changing so the more reflection spheres you have inside your scene the more realistically your reflections can be rendered at the moment i don't really want to focus on the reflections on the wall no one's going to notice no one's going to look at these too carefully so at the moment i just want to get a nice reflection on this metallic surface over here 
So I'm just going to drag that up and then we'll replicate that so we can do it the same for our other one. Now you'll see that there are also settings for the reflection capture. The radius for this is 3000, so it's quite a big radius. You could change this to whatever you want, but since we are trying to capture the whole scene, we might as well make it quite big. Now you'll see that we also have a warning for reflection captures needing to be rebuilt. So this, as you can see, it's already changed to now more accurately reflect the walls. But we need to build this so that it will be accurate. So I'm going to pause the video for a second and we are going to build our lighting and reflections. Now that our lighting and reflection captures have finished building, you can now see that our scene is looking pretty close to what I had in the original build. This reflection on this frame is actually looking a lot better. But as you might have noticed, the quality of the shadows is definitely not what I had when I started. So for example, this shadow on our floor over here is not as clear as we would maybe like. It clears up when you go a bit closer, but we'd like it to be a bit more detailed, maybe to also show off this little statue and lamp lighting. So what I'm going to do is talk about something called a light map resolution. So if you click on your static mesh and go all the way down to your lighting section, you'll see that this overridden light map resolution has been ticked and set to 32. Now I did this before the tutorial just to show you how pixelated and sort of bad looking your shadow would be if you have a very low light map resolution. So what we want to do is for all of your important static meshes, the ones that we're, where shadows will be cast, you want to set your light map resolution to a lot higher. Now, how high is up to you and the performance of your machine, but for now, I'm just going to set this to 512. You'll see that once we do this, the lighting needs to be rebuilt. Okay. Once you have set the light map resolution of all of your meshes to 512, you could now at this stage rebuild your lighting again, but I don't want to waste too much time and have to do that. So we're just going to carry on with the tutorial and we will build it again later. Two of the more important things that we need to look at quickly are light mass importance volumes and light portals. Now, light portals we will look at first. It's something that Unreal sort of introduced without anyone taking too much notice to it. But what it is essentially is this volume which I've placed over the window over here. You can see that it's similar to a light mass importance volume in that it is just a volume that you place over areas of importance. But what this does is essentially if you place it over a window or a reflective glass or any sort of light emitting hole essentially is that it will tell the engine to emphasize and place light around this volume so it knows to place more light in this area than anywhere else. This is similar to a light mass importance volume which we have over here. So you can now see whatever is within the bounds of this light mass importance volume will be much more realistically rendered than anything outside of it. So it's important to have a light mass importance volume inside your scene. So it is important to make sure that your light mass importance volume is not too big or too small. You would like it to be big enough to encompass all the objects inside your scene, but if you are building a open world game for example it is impossible to have a huge huge importance volume like that it would take 
hours and hours to render and it would just not be viable if you do not have that kind of time to waste. So make sure it fits snugly around the objects inside your scene and you make sure that if there are certain areas you would like to emphasize more, that is where you will place your light mass importance volume. Now, we're just going to go through a couple of tricks to make sure that your lighting just looks a bit better, softer and cleaner than it currently does. So one of the easiest tricks that you can do is to change the quality of your lighting build itself. So all you have to do is go over here and go to lighting quality. Now you'll see that the lighting we have currently done is at a preview level. If we were to do this at production level, it would look much better straight away. That combined with the change of our light map resolutions should result in a very nice looking scene. So the last thing we are going to look at is different world settings which we can change. The world settings tab can be opened by going into window and then selecting the world settings tab which has now popped up over here. As you can see here are our light mass settings. Now these are the only ones you should have to change for now but you can experiment with them as you will. Just be warned that changing these settings can have a huge effect on your build times. I changed a few of these earlier today just to get a better result and it spends two or three hours building my lighting. So just be careful with what you do. But I will go through what will increase your build times and what won't as much. So the first thing to look, look at is the number of sky lighting bounces. At the moment this is defaulted to 1. This means that simply our sun which is represented by this directional light, is going to hit this surface, bounce off at whatever angle it happens to hit, and that is it. So you have effectively that one source of light. So if you change this to more than one, it will increase your build times, but for every successive bounce you add, it's just, it's not going to add as much. So if you add one skylighting bounce and make it two, then it's going to add a bit to your build time, but if you add, it, if you make it to 5 or 10 or 100, it's not going to add that much more. So we can set this to, let's say, 5 for now. And then we also have a number of indirect lighting bounces. This is not from your sun, it's from your spots and point lights. So we can also change, let's change that for now. Then we also have our indirect lighting smoothness. Now, if you read this description over here, one is the default smooth smoothness, but higher values like three, they will smooth out the lighting, but the shadows will lose detail. So for example, this shadow might over here would blur and just become this unrecognizable shape, and that's not what we want. So for the last step for today's tutorial, I'm just going to build this using production lighting and all the world settings and light map resolutions that we have changed. So I'm going to show you how that would look. Our lighting has finally finished building. And as you can see, our scene now looks a lot better than what we started with. We now get these nice shadows coming in from our statue and lamp over there. And obviously if you have a more complicated scene with more objects, it's going to look even better. So, after today's tutorial, you should be able to see the, the power of lighting inside a scene for creating a mood. It's very, very vital to practice these concepts. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you are interested in learning more about the Unreal Engine and I will see you next time.